Welcome to the Crypto Mastery Class. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl, and we've got Joe on the line, the creator of the Crypto Mastery Indicators. And we are here to make crypto easy to understand and simple to invest in. So we're going to look at the news, overall market, hot movers in the basket, indicators, and question and answer. So today, Bahrain Central Bank set to test Bitcoin payment processing solution, written by Justinus on finbold.com. The Central Bank of Bahrain, DBB, plans to roll out a Bitcoin, BTC, payment processing and payout solution in partnership with BTC payment processor OpenNode. In a press statement published on September 13th, OpenNode stated that the solution is guided by the growing interest in digital assets across the Middle East. The company noted that the solution would be central to pushing economic growth while supporting businesses. According to Dala Buhaji from the Bahrain Economic Development Board, the Bitcoin payment solution is part of a growing digital economy in a regulated space. Next, we have the Raven coin, RVN, rallies by another 25% hours before Ethereum merge. Crypto Market Review, written by Armin, September 13th on U.Today. Raven coin, one of the most notable heirs of Ethereum's hash rate, is rallying once again as only a few hours remain before the merge update. In addition to the fundamental update, the CPI data release is also causing spikes in volatility on the cryptocurrency market. RVN's 100% rally is not stopping. RVN remains one of the strongest assets in the whole industry in terms of price performance. The asset gained around 100% to its value since September 9th, and the market data suggests that it's far from being over as no selling pressure spike has been spotted. Despite the 11% correction in the last 24 hours, most of the selling volume has been successfully absorbed by investors who are willing to receive exposure to one of few Ethereum alternatives. Ethereum Classic, one of the main competitors to Raven, on the other hand, is not showing performance similar to Raven's RVNs as the asset lost around 3% of its value in the last nine days. The most notable move was made on September 6th when ETC lost around 18% in less than a day, gaining around 26% to its value previously. With only a few hours left for the merge update to go live, Ethereum's POW token started gaining traction on the market as the token's price increased by more than 25% in the last few hours finally showing an inflow of funds to an asset that lost more than 75% of its price since the initial listing on the market. Next and last, we have Russia's eyes, Russia eyes Bitcoin for international trade in 2023. Russia may begin accepting Bitcoin and some cryptocurrencies as payments for international trade in 2023. Per a report from local media company Izvestia, the announcement of a timeline for the usage of the alternative payment method for cross-border payments comes a week after the Russian Central Bank and Ministry of Finance agree the move would be necessary. Ivan Chabaskov, director of the financial stability market for the Russian Ministry of Finance, was cited in the Investia report as the source for the timeline, which was reportedly confirmed by Antoly Akoskov, the head of the State Duma Committee, Russia's legislative governing body. We have a number of legislative initiatives that we are working out in working order, but which have not yet been formally submitted to the government, Chaboskov said. According to, to Chaboskov, Russia will enable businesses to choose whether they want to use Bitcoin or some cryptocurrencies allowed by the state. The operations of this procedure are expected to be facilitated by the Moscow 
and St. Petersburg Stock Exchanges. Now we're going to look at the overall market. We'll look at Bitcoin and Ethereum, but first we'll jump in to see what the total cryptocurrency market cap is. So currently, the seven-day analysis is in front of you, and we are looking at over $1 trillion. So it's pretty exciting. Last week, we were under $1 trillion, so we've hit the mark. And I've boldened the line so you can see where the $1 trillion mark is and how we are over it. And we have been for a few days now. So let's hope that this stays and maintains itself. But currently, it looks like things were going in the southern direction. So let's see where the new floor hits. And hopefully, we stay above the $1 trillion mark. Now, on this is Coin360, and this is a heat map, and this is for my visual learners. This is a one-week performance market cap in block size. So each block represents the amount of money collectively that is invested in that particular coin, token, or asset. So Bitcoin currently is dominating over all other markets at 38.56%. And Bitcoin for the last week went up 6.21%, and Ethereum went down 1.46%. So this particular heat map, what happens is you have three shades green and three shades of red. The darkest shaded green, you're going to see it's on Atom. You'll see a star underneath the Ethereum block. That means that Atom is three steps up in price. So this is a time where if you have some Atom, you may wanna to look to see if it's a take profit time. And then you have three shades of red. So the darkest red is represented in Cardano, which is the ADA to the right. I believe that's the darkest red. Yep, and that would be three steps down. So if you're in the acquisition mode and you're looking to buy something, one of the indicators that you would want to see who what's on super sale is look at the red zones and then go deeper into the charts like we're about to do um, so that when you always want to buy low sell high right so this is a really good for my visual learners to kind of zone in really quick and see what's going on with the market and you also have an opportunity on this page to click that market cap area where i have the arrow in the top center and it'll go to volume size so that's another idea if you wanted to do a quick analysis. So we are going to use the crypto mastery dot online indicators now to subscribe. Just use the above URL. So Bitcoin USD one week performance with crypto mastery indicators. So this is taken a little bit earlier today and you have the early reversal on the top right hand corner it's still in red and the average true range is still in the red range the radars next indicators on below that on the right you can see for the 60 minute it's going down 240 stands for four hours d stands for one day and the w stands for one week so for the hour four and day the average is going down but for the one week bitcoin was up in the trend indicator, the key came in a few weeks ago, and we are still waiting for a bell to come in. It just has not um, had more powerful up swing to trigger that bell. And then you have the trend strength indicator, which we are still looking at the red arrows down, so we're waiting for that to change. The signal line, that is green, but it's very tight. So there is, some, there is some pressure for Bitcoin to move upward um, on the one week. It's showing that it is, but it's, it's, it's not a strong move. And the volatility index is oversold at 6.57, which in my opinion is pretty exciting for Bitcoin because Bitcoin doesn't go down that low very often. Now we have the Ethereum USD one week performance chart with crypto master indicators. You have the early reversal that came in a few weeks ago. The average true range is still in the red zone, which is the downward zone. And the radar is showing that for the one hour, Ethereum is down, but the four hour average is up. For the one day average, it's down. And for the one week average, it's up. So it's a lot of diversity going on in those time frames. So I would say it's volatile, a lot of movement. The radar is, is, is generally trending upward on this one. Um, no, I'm sorry, the trend is trending upward, but we don't have a confirmation with the two, a three, or a four. 
the trend strength indicator is showing that Ethereum is moving upward. It's not in the oversold zone yet for the one week average. The signal line is still moving in the upward direction and it's it's close, it's tight. So therefore there's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of moving parts in Ethereum right now, a lot of selling and buying, not enough in one direction to press or move that greed and the gold line into it at a larger diversity space. The, the volatility index is at 19.21. So it's still in the oversold zone, which is great when you want to get something on super low, low levels. And um, we'll see. We'll see what happens after this merge with Ethereum. So the basket we have is Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these can be found on Coinbase. So we're going to look at the hot movers in the basket. So these four are my analysis of the coins from Coinbase and what is actually moving up for the day and the one week. So we have H <coughs> XHV and we have Ape, Bitcoin, REQ. So your watch list um, coins are up for the moment. So these are not up for the moment. They are just up for the day and the week. But you can reorganize your watch list by change of percentage change of the of the coins you can organize your watch list by the amount of change in price the last price the symbol name you can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell and these coins are up for the day well they're actually these ones are not up for the day i apologize that um they're just saying that they are trending up for the day and um i always do look for ones that are on the floor too so this is analyzed using the crypto radar. So we're going to look at the crypto screener. And this is the one day crypto screener technical rating for Coinbase exchange coins. And so you have the technical rating, the strong buys, one, two, three, four, five, six strong buys for the day. And then the ones below are the just buys. So you can always do that by going into your filtration system in your trading view account and click on the filter and you could choose what exchange that you want to work with. And then when you go to cryptomastery.online, you can get more training and you'll go through these kind of slides like this that will explain a little bit more about TradingView and how to use it and what everything means. So you go to www.cryptomastery.online to subscribe and just use the above URL. So the indicators that you're going to get or you have currently are volatility index oversold conditions, the ERI, which is the early reversal indicator, dynamic ATR, which is average true range, the trend indicator, the TSI, which stands for trend strength indicator, the radar screener, and the signal line. And then you'll go into these charts a little bit more into training when you subscribe. So we're gonna jump down here and begin using the Crypto Mastery indicators. So you can too, if you go to cryptomastery.online, to subscribe, just use the above URL. So now, Joe, we're gonna jump into the charts live and bring you on and you guys can ask some questions now. And it's so good to have you guys all here. So we'll have, um, Probably a good 40 minutes to go through things. So okay. Joe was speak. Go ahead. Tell them what you found, Joe. How are <laughs> Hi, you? Hi, Susie. How's it going? Huh? Hi, everyone. <laughs> um, pretty much I've been kind of uh, taking a look in here to find something uh, good. Um, you know, where we've kind of been starting off each week here, um, which is a great way and a great routine, is uh, with that crypto screener, um, just for anyone that's new that's following along. And usually I'm able to find a couple coins out of there right away, you know, Susie. So um, pretty much one of the markets that I uh, found that I thought was really interesting to take a look at is the uh, Mana Ethereum. If you take a look at that on the daily. I'm trying to 
to find it on my screener. Are you are you in um, just Coinbase only, or are you in like any exchange? Uh, I'm in um, Coinbase. You know, and if you go to the top where it has the a little search thing. button, yeah, you see that little that little magnifying glass yeah. under performance. If you type that in, Man. Mana, okay, and ETH, that one there. And if you notice, right, see how the technical rating on it is a cell? So yeah. the thing is, is that this goes into where this is generic information, but when you're able to take this information and utilize it with the program, well, then now you're able to uh, put yourself in a position where now you can be positioning yourself or anticipating a move. So on this one here, for example, I wanted to point out because uh, we have in here the first green dot on the TSI. So if you um, uh, size that chart up, Susie, and minimize the bottom, okay. I just wanted to just show a few things here. Perfect. I just, can I back up and say I'm really thankful that you explained that it that the technical rating with trading view is saying sell. But in order to get an early and use the indicators, you're going to have an advantage. So you just use that screener just to like pull up what's going on on Coinbase in general, and then you look at the indicators. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, I mean, the, the the whole thing is is that that this trading view is a great program because it allows you to organize the information. The better we organize, the better we process the information. So if you make that chart that chart just a little bit um, tighter, please. There you go. I just wanted to go back to show the emphasis of when it broke the uh, ATR to the downside, which was July 18th. So in this case point here, you have something that's a little bit different than what we've been looking at over the last few weeks, because we have the ATR, which is actually setting up along with these other elements. So this generally shows that there should be, um, if this market does move, right, that this move, we should see some follow through. So if you look at that, Susie, um, what percent did that move down from that ATR? And how long has that been? It looks like July 16th. Yes, yeah, 59 days, it went down 34%. Yeah. So, Generally, like a market cycle, and how many days is that? 59, yeah. A market cycle yes. is usually like about four to six weeks. So four to six weeks will take you, right? Sometimes it can go a little bit extended, but this is about 60 days. It's been on a cycle down. So right here, we're seeing the power of the ATR, which is important because, you know, um, I want you to see the value and what actually you have. And, um, Sometimes it's easier if someone takes you by the hand to actually show you what you have. So in this case point here, we have a possible situation that's developing that's been 60 days in the making um, if it tests that ATR, which is trading up above higher. Now, what we also have is we have the volatility index, which is at the bottom, and that's trading below the 20. So right now we have a check on the volatility index, right, we have on the signal line, we have a check. And on the TSI, we have the first green dot. And this is coming out of oversold, right? Because it's down there on the green, and that shows oversold condition. So we have three checks in this. And then right now, what we're waiting for, right, is we're waiting for that bell alert. And it hasn't happened yet, but we may get that within the next day or two. And then this might be something um, which would be very interesting on how this develops in here. And if this market was to follow through and go higher with a bell alert, I would really be looking forward to test that ATR. Because that ATR actually comes in right at the top of that Kelter band. And that's another. Yeah, if you want to situation. explain to them. Sorry. Oh well, the the, the Kelter band. If we're trading on, on with the moving average on the downside, that's just showing you 
um, the direction of the trend. So when you look on here, on it looks like about uh, August 8th, right? We've been trading trading with the lower side of the band. And that's called the lower band. And um, it looks like right on the 6th, it tested the middle band. And then right now, it's, again, right at that lower band. So generally, we get a move to the middle band. And then we look for it to possibly test the upper one. In this case point, the upper band just happens to be the ATR. So what that does is it could be a, a breakout point, which means that the market price hits that and explodes. Now, it doesn't have to stay up there, right? But it may hit that price um, and explode and then get, you know, go back to normal again. But anytime when you have uh, mathematically, uh, 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 the alignment between two coefficients like this, um, that's just something really good to know. So this right here overall um, is one in here that you want to set your alert for the bell alert. So if we go back to the chart, Susie, uh, the bell alert would be the last thing that you're waiting for, waiting for the bell alert. And uh, we're good with this one. I am on the one day chart, one day chart. So guys, what I do is I actually write a note to myself so that I'm going to understand what to do with this alert. And you can name it whatever you want, but that's not going to come up in your email. Only the message is going to come up. So that's what I did that to set that alert. It's great. Do you guys have any questions about MANA? No questions. Great find. All right. Yeah. What do you want to look at? This is another one. Do you guys want us to look at anything or you want us to go on and look at the next one, Joe? Yeah, of course. You know, I am, I'm always finding something. <laughs> I always find something in here uh, good to find. I, I call it shake the money tree. <laughs> nice. uh, if you type in this sim this symbol here, which is uh, Fort F O R T H B T C. You want me to do the Binance one? Uh, if you go to Coinbase, F O R T H. You're not, if you go to um, Ooh, it's a all sources. Thing that, um, it's, a, yeah, it's, it is all sources. I mean, I can go ahead and just call, just say Coinbase only. There you go. That's interesting. Wow, there was just so many. It was like, usually I'm used to Coinbase being up front. All right. And you know, yeah, for anyone that's following along, if you go to go look for your coin and it's not there, you really want to set it, set that setting, Susie, if you can go back. I just wanted to show that because that happens to me too. Like you go looking for a coin and the coin's not there. And it's really important that when you click on um, on the top right where it says select source, that you choose that your, your broker who you're with. Because some of you guys are with Coinbase, some of you with, with Binance, some of you are with uh, Keycoin. So if you don't find your coin on there, Set it to what you have, um, uh, you know, so then that way there you can zero in on the opportunity. Okay, so in this case point, we want to go to Fort BTC. Oh, you wanted to go to Fort uh, uh, ETC? The BTC. Okay. There you go. Okay, so that one. Perfect. Okay, so this is one in here which has. Uh, ERI today, which is great to know. So if you make the chart a little bit tighter, right? What we want to take a look at here is is that the um, what we're what we're looking for. So in this case point here, the volatility index, right? It's almost down to the red. 
right? Almost there. So, you know, that, to me, that that's kind of close enough. It doesn't have to go into the red. But I'm going to tell you what here what catch my interest. What's catch my interest is the TSI. Now, I have my alert set on the TSI, and I'm waiting for the next green dot. Oh, uh, so here, guys, I'm so sorry. I, we right in green right there. So fourth BTC TSI is green. So I'm just going to paste that and then you have green create. So now the alert, the alert is set. OK, go ahead, Joe. Sorry about that. Perfect. So what we're doing here is, um, if you want to, if you could put that on there, waiting for, yeah, perfect. Set the TSI alert. Yeah. And you're waiting for. And uh, also, uh, you you can also set the alert for the signal line. An alert. So we're going to say crossing up, or do you just leave crossing? Uh, crossing. You leave it crossing just because it's any time they're crossing. So yeah. fourth BTC signal line crossing. Create, continue, and then we can just say alert is set. All right, so yeah, our alert is set for the TSI and alert is set for signal line. Okay, and uh, you know, and uh, chances are, uh, and then also you can set your alert for the trend. So in this case point, here's an example, where is that we have one check, which is the ERI, and then now we have uh, a few different things that could possibly happen, and three, three um, confirmations that we could be looking for as this week progresses to confirm uh, this potential opportunity. You know, with the most important one being the TSI, because usually, like when you get that first green dot on that TSI that day, that's signaling that, hey, things are starting to move. And you know how that is, you know, things can move in a way where, um, you know, they move too far too fast. <laughs> yeah, well, it's great momentum. You got it up for the one hour, the four hour, and the one day. Yeah. So um, we have a, another one here. So now that we got this set, let's go to another one here. And this one's another one that just the other day, well, today it gave an ER, uh, a ERI. Okay, it's USDT EUR. I noticed that a lot of these currencies, they seem to be moving. Oh, you're doing, oh, so you're doing a little foreign exchange there with crypto. Well, oh, so you're, <laughs> interesting. So um, on this case point, right, today we got an ERI print. And if you look at the positioning of the TSI, the TSI looks like it's just about to give its green dot. So this is what's interesting in here on this case point is, is that we're in the coming out of the oversold condition on the TSI, and so when we get this next, uh, we're waiting for the next green dot. So you want to put waiting for there, and we're also uh, we'll be waiting for the signal line and the trend indicator. So this is something else that we can watch in here as the week progresses, and it'd be interesting to see. What happens in here with this next green dot, especially in here, how uh, 
you know, there's this exuberant amount of uh, money flow that's just coming into the market with increased volatility. And we may see this uh, market here go make go up and put a new high in, you know, because we're getting that ERI. And it, as you look at the mold highs, the mold highs was the beginning of September. So there may be a good chance that maybe this thing may run for a couple of days and put a new high in. So we'll definitely uh, take a look. But the uh, the high that it put in there uh, is right up there above uh, par 70. So we'll see. All right. All right. Okay. So, so you want to, um, the next one that we're going to look at here is, and this one here, gave a, a ERI a couple of days ago, right? And, okay, if you go to FX USD, and I think these are all new coins that they're putting on Coinbase, which is great because, you know, you'll be able to really have a balanced portfolio. And then also, you'll be able to really spot different opportunities. So that ERI, in this case point, and if you look at the timing on that, look how quick that thing popped up. Susie, what percentage was that? Did it go to the high? So when you do these these currency ones, you really need to set your alerts and take profits because it does highs like these. Like yeah. fifteen days went up ninety six percent, but let's let's just say like you just had gotten it yesterday and. Well, yeah, we're looking at the time from the ERI. Oh, oh, okay. One day it went up 89%. Okay, so from from the time where, okay, this is the average true range. Okay, so you want me to, hold on. You want me to take it well, from this early well, reversal, okay. Yeah, right there. The, early, the reversal on September 12th, yeah. Oh, right there. 93% in three days. <laughs> yeah, so I hope when these markets... That's huge. Yeah. And, and so when these things break out in the currency, you got to take profit because, you know, it just seems like, you know, it, it, they're thin markets and the price really does, it's not able to sustain. So you get these swings and if you don't get out, you can be stuck. Yeah, don't get in. Like this is one of those, those take profit times because the thing is, is people will say, oh, my God, it, it's moving upward. And, and if they're new to the industry, they'll say, oh, buy it. <laughs> They're way above the Keltner band, guys. When you see it above this Keltner band, that's dangeroso. So that's a take profit time. Yeah. It, it's a take profit if you, if at the moment, I mean, it's going to correct itself and come down and be more stable. So you give it a, a minute if you're in the acquisition mode, but this is definitely a take profit time, I would say. It's got some good momentum. Look at the, the the radar has it up for the hour, down for the four hour, but up for the day and up for the week. So um, that momentum is still moving, but you know, we can't give financial advice, but if it was my prod, if I owned it and bought it two days ago, it takes some profit. <laughs> yeah, well, the, 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 it seems like when- Good find. As I'm, I'm, as I'm going through in here, what I'm noticing, is that you know like I'm, I'm showing in here some examples a lot on the buy side um but also there's some things that are happening where you really want to be taking profits so like if you change that chart to the ethereum today there was a eri on the downside and, and let's talk the, about this yeah you want it, the us dollar yes okay Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, I was just gonna just I was just gonna say again, it's the first red dot on the TSI, and 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 that is like a great place to take profit because you're getting a red dot on the TSI, and you're also getting a ERI both on the same day. Right. I mean, uh, it's a really um, clear 
uh, indication that the market could be potentially going down lower. So this is right really where you want to scale out of your position in here and uh, and be thankful that you have the tools and the education so that you can have the right expectation to where the market's going so that you don't, you're not misled by the, the propaganda that's out there where you can have somebody tell yeah. you the market's going up and then you don't have these tools and then now you're dumbfounded when the market makes a movement like this and you say, I don't understand and you get frustrated. But really, you just have to um, just become educated and have the right tools. And then when we see danger, because this is danger, right? Like, let's go, uh, if you go back to that chart, Susie, and look at the other uh, overlays, I just want to show the TSI again. Because, you know, I've been talking about like how to position when the market's going up and what we can do. But I also want to say like, well, what do we do when there's danger? Like, what's danger? This is danger. Coming in here and trying to buy this market, and we have a red dot on that TSI. So we yeah. want to scale out of positions in here if we're long in here and in, enjoy the move up. And if you notice, conversely, we're using the same rules to exit the position as we are to. Um, to initiate our position. So earlier we just reviewed some examples where we were looking for the first green dot on the TSI for the upside movement, where it was an oversold condition, and then now we're looking at here where it's in a the take profit zone, conditions are overbrought, and it's the first red dot on the TSI. So if you go back to the chart there, right, next in place what we're looking for, so this is what I want you to type in, Susie, is waiting for cross down on the signal line. Because this right here is just the first indication that the market is going down when you see the TSI. Now you're looking for this to confirm because if you didn't get out of the trade, you really need to get out of the trade with this one. I mean, or scale out of your position. And again, we're using the same rules as we do to initiate the trades, as we do to exit our trades. So it's really completely universal. It's a really fun game once you learn the rules because when you're waiting for these things to happen, it's a great thing because you're able to exit out of the trade. You're able to um, set the right expectation for the trade. And then you're able to put energy into markets that are moving, like new opportunities and not try to go against the the trend or the bias, the momentum of the market, and avoid avoid danger when we see it. So we have the, the cross down here on the signal line, and um, oh yeah, and this, another one we're waiting for is you're waiting for um, the uh, trend indicator, the moving average to turn red. So you can type that in. Excuse me. Are waiting for the trend to turn red. Just I know I got. We have new people that are are on here. Oh, you're in the wrong spot. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I was like, why is it so big? <laughs> trend to go. <laughs> So I'm going to just open this up so they can see the difference. So this is the red line and here's a green line. So when everything goes south and the, the direction switches, then you'll see this red line, another confirmation. You know, and also the pain of thought. Oh, OK, well, let's show them that. So that you get the clear, clear um, coin. And then when it's moving upward, you've got the green coin. The green, not coin, clear candlestick at the green candlestick. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, I've got crypto in my mind. I'm making a list. I'm thinking, okay, I got to go trade. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> so this is one here where you, you want to be taking a profit. And I also noticed that we got to have another one on the Bitcoin. So if you go to the Bitcoin, this is another one with the ERI. And you know, you can set your alert for the ERI. 
and and that's another one you don't have to you know don't be frustrated on this missing things this is technology and and technology means it gives us a way in there to facilitate and process you know information so that we don't get overwhelmed and in this case point it, it is almost impossible to sit here and just stare at all these charts and all these markets and say, I don't want to miss the next ERI trade, or I don't want to miss the next uh, TSI trade. But in all reality, it's impossible for us. We're, we're, we're humans, right? We're, you know, we're in our human form. We're not robots. So it, it, it's impossible for us to be able to retain this information, and even me, as much experience as I have, to retain all this information in my, in my head. But what I can do is, is that I can organize the information. And by organizing it, my brain can process it better. And when, when we set alerts, the anxiety of FOMO of missing out goes away. And now the conviction of the doing comes in. And uh, in this case point, uh, set your alerts because we have another ERI here that came into play. And it's the same thing that we're looking for on the Ethereum. We're, we're waiting for the next red dot on the TSI. Now, we haven't got it yet, but there's a good chance within the next couple of days we're going to get it. So you want to be looking to maybe possibly scale out of your positioning. Oh, my gosh. It keeps doing that. Sorry about that. Now, sometimes you'll look out and you'll get the red TSI when it's overbrought in the blue. And we're, we're going to jump to that after this because um, really this is the way you learn. You really need someone to take you through this to really show you in here. So that's to sell. If you guys have Bitcoin and you're wanting to swing trade Bitcoin, then if you're waiting on the red zone. I think that's helpful. A lot of times people only think about or only teach buy, buy, buy. They don't teach when to sell, sell, sell. Yeah, well, you, you look, you got to take a profit, you know, and you take a profit when the conditions are applicable. Okay. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, ERIs that are coming coming in here on this. Um, I'm just trying to just go through here. Okay, yeah, I wanted to show this example here just on the reversal. If you go to the atom, and this is another one to scale out a positioning. Right now, if you notice how the TSI is positioned. It's up there in the blue, which is which is really you don't get that a lot, right? So the thing is, is that if you're in this market, you know it's another confirmation that you should be uh, scaling down or scaling out of your position. When you get that and it's in the blue, it's much more powerful than you know because it's it, it anything that's in that blue is representing the stochastics above the 80. Yep, so there's your 80 and there's your 100. Mm -hmm. These numbers are significant when you're setting your alerts. You can arrange an alert based on where it is in the um, stochastics or the volatility index, which is the very bottom indicator. It's good for you to understand the 80 to 100 zones because those are your ceilings. So when you get in that area and you choose not to take a profit, then you got to have some stamina because you got to get ready to withstand everything going down. And I would say intraday or a day wave or a week wave or a month wave. Sometimes there's yearly waves in crypto. So you guys have any totally. questions so far? I'm quiet today. 
So this is good. Yeah, because Adam had a really good look how long that run was. It'll be interesting to see if the average true range actually switches. So look, the average true range came in back here on July 6th and up until now, it went up 74% in 69 days. So that was a long time of maintaining that upward momentum. And it hasn't really, even though the early reversal is coming in, it hasn't switched. Ah, look, the alert on mana came in that we just set. Okay, so that, yeah, it, it looks like that's starting to edge up higher in there. Yeah, yeah so, alert by the one day. When it comes into to playing here, I think that we have a lot of uh, uh, things that are setting up right now. So I think between now and the end of the week, we'll get that movement. And uh, it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, if, and if, if you have if, Go ahead. how everything lays out. I'm just trying to find something. Go ahead, Susie. Sorry. Yeah. Maybe we'll circle back to, to MANA ETH really quick so they can see that alert that got triggered. Yeah. Well, you know, that's me, what that means is, is that on the that it's starting to edge up higher. And once we get towards, uh, I believe it's 5 o'clock, we'll get the final print on that bar. So today, after 5, uh, you want to really check and see if we get that actual final confirmation that that's a green dot, if it if you do get it, well then you know tomorrow we may actually get the bell alert, and uh, you know when you take a look at the chart, you can see how we're right at that bottom kelter. Yeah, uh, you know that's I remember my favorite this. time to buy. I, it's way below. I I remember this from a couple of weeks ago when it failed. Like you see how like we got the ERI, and the ERI is not a hundred percent, right? But there was two ERIs in there where, when the market doesn't follow through, we call that a fail. They say you know we have two fails where it didn't follow through. So when when we look at this example, <laughs> we go back to man. I'm sorry. I was yeah. Yeah, at ETH. Right. Was this I just wanted to talk. Yeah. Well, if you just um, I w yeah, minimize that, that watch list, and I just really wanted to talk about uh the ERI, right? So when we take a look at the first chart, yeah, right here it stopped. Okay. If you go to the arrow on the left hand side, right, and if you point that rate at the first ERI, which is on the left. Okay, right. That was your first okay wave. So right there, Susie, I want you to write down first wave up. Okay, and then if you take a look at the second ERI, which took place on the eighth, that was our second wave down. And and the reason why I want to point this out is because this ERI, none of these tools are a hundred percent. A hundred percent doesn't exist. But we can learn better how to interpret the tools better and better, and we can increase our odds to as close as a hundred percent as possible on how we interpret them. So in this case point the second wave was down now after we had two good eris like the beginning of the trend when you take a look in here on the 26 right there susie and you take a look here on it looks like the fourth of september these eris were green and the market didn't go up it didn't have any follow through that's called a fail. And that's going to happen. Right? So generally we get the we get the wave. I'm just going to write fail. Well, fail is yeah. right here, say. Yeah. 
and we may get a couple fails, but that's just how 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 the market traded. Now, this is another thing where you can set your alert because if we get another ERI, there's a good probability that the market is going to go up with this one. Like I haven't seen really more than two fails in a row on a lot of examples, you know, because that's a mathematical uh, anomaly that happens. Like with these chart overlays, you know, you it shows you the clues, and then we take these clues and we set expectations, and we set expectations by setting alerts, and then now at that point, the only thing we really need to do is take action. So this is something in here um, which you can set your alert for that ERI and if we do get an ERI, it would just be another confirmation that after two fails, we have a successful new third wave up. Good. I think this one is going to be a good one. There was some um, movement. I want to just show you guys a little bit on this to see what is going down. So when the early reversal came in and then it's here's today, went down 28% in 36 days. So Amanda's moving, but it's not as, as, as powerful of movements and waves as we've seen in the past in, in other coins i'm saying in, in crypto in general there's a lot of big waves and a lot of small waves and maybe that mo the momentum just the other thing i wanted to show you guys about this is that this er, the center keltner band it never actually made it up there so typically you're going to bypass the first you're going to get to the first one that's either going to be the ceiling or the new floor and it just didn't get enough momentum one two three four down and then it didn't even hit the ceiling these next three times this is a day chart too guys so this is like each each day then you broke through and then it, it's that little little candlestick that just means that in general it did pass through that that middle keltner band wasn't strong enough and it didn't maintain enough time there to make it a thick candlestick it was just a wick so it's been having a lot of difficult time hitting that, that middle average so be exciting to see how this thing plays out with this new upward momentum yeah and, and you know um also i know that we have some uh, also some customers that are on keycoin you know it seems that you know we kind of there's only a couple of coins really I can show you on Coinbase, but I was just looking at the other exchange, and if you type this into the uh, ETN, ETH, you know, like I try to look for examples and find coins where it, it's just in the midst of, of movement. So then I can show you the best example possible. So, okay, so what you need to do is first change the uh, uh, source. So we want to go to KeyCoin Exchange. Yeah. Then is the coin Ethereum the first uh, one? Uh, no, ETN. ETH. Electronium. Oh, yeah. I bought this when it was in an, an ICO. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So this one here, I thought would be a good example because we just got the bell alert today. And we're testing the upper end of that Kelter band. And if you make the chart um, closer, Susie, size the chart closer. Yeah, this is this because I wanted to point out that the ATR is up there as well. Yeah, yeah, so meaning the ATR, the average true range, is in the, the down zone or? 
Well, the market price is, looks like it's getting ready to possibly test it, and it's right up at the upper end of that. So we may see a breakout and see it change. Nice. It's good to see this coin's moving. It definitely had some good downward spiraling. It did go up. Look, the three, you've got it up for the four hour on the radar, the one day, and the one week. So um, let's just see how much it actually went up in the last few days. Wow, let's say someone had gotten it here and there. So it's up 30% in the last seven days. That's good. It's got some movement. Got some, some good momentum going there. And it's not on the trend strength indicator, guys. It's not in the oversold yet. And it looks like it had a little push down, which makes sense. You run up 30%, someone's going to take profit. Now it's pushing back up. So. And the signal line is still flying. It's nice and separated. I'd like to see that. And the volatility index is at a 32.2. And so we still have some room for the ceiling. So that's good. All right. So is there any questions before we jump off? We have four more minutes, Joe. Okay, let me see if I can find one more here. So if you go to that uh, crypto screener, or, or actually you can just type it in, D-O-R-A-B-T-C. There you go. And usually I, I stay on the um, the Coinbase and do a lot, but when there's no no op there's no no trade, you have to let the market come to you. So sometimes a lot of these different exchanges, sometimes one exchange will have different coins than the other, and it's always good to diversify because you never know if one of these exchanges um, blows up, and then you know you don't want to have all your coins in one exchange. So um, again. This one here was the ERI, and then also we're waiting for the first green dot on the TSI. So for anyone that on the Kikoi exchange, the Dora factory, could be something in here definitely to watch this week. Well, thanks. Do you want to quickly, we have three minutes left. Do you want to go through the watch list really quick? I organized it. Sure. All right, so let's go ahead and let's say all sources. And um, what I wanted to say, this the Raven coin um, was talked about on the article. So I thought maybe we could look at Raven and see where that is. Wow. So Raven is not had a lot of time on Qcoin, so a lot to pick up Binance. So this is the article that I read about when they were saying that Raven was moving up so much. So from this point to this point, Raven went up 139.33% in nine days. So this is definitely in the take profit zone. You have the trend strength indicator is and a 91. Remember, guys, the ceiling is a 100, and so you only have nine points before you get to that ceiling. And then this is a really good example for take profit because you have the early reversal saying, "Hey, look, it's, it, it's only a matter of time. It's going to come down." This is a one-day chart, and then you also have the three Keltner bands. Remember, we try to buy down here where it's underneath the lower Keltner band, and it's way higher than that so let's just to give you an example let's just say someone got in on this entry right like right after the entry came in so say right down here and that's 131 percent so people are going to take profit they know that when it gets that high that they're they're risking their profit if they don't jump out and that's thus you have some downward spiral so this is a a take profit moment on that um, but also if you want to see what's super down i've sorted everything in my watch list for coinbase and oh things are changing 
Well, these, oh, there we go. So this one, this shipping had everything going down. <laughs> so this could be something to watch. You get the first TSI uh, for the one day. But I was looking, I usually look at the one week charts. Um, but I guess we could stick with the one day since we've been on that all day. But um, so everything is going down. So I would check these out for something super low to buy. And but the one thing that I do try to tend to do is look for something that is on the lower Keltner band. And I look at the one week charts. So some of these are so new, you're not going to be able to see it. But so here's one like crypto.com. You see how it's like, here's the Keltner band and it's way below that. <clears throat> so let's see if it hasn't switched, it's still moving down, the signal line is up. And there's not a lot of data because crypto.com hasn't had a lot of time on Coinbase. And this is what, again, is a one week chart. But this is something where this origin token, same thing, it's below the, not super below the Keltner band, but it's, it's, it's close. EOS, no, it's not under, here we go, Doge is kind of low. Arch, it's below, but you know, it's still hitting. Now, this is an interesting situation, spell token. It's all green, which means that it's in the oversold zone, but it's still below the Keltner band. So that's a very interesting situation. And you think, wow, hmm, should I buy? But you're also, in a high. So that's one of those things you got to be careful. Of. Make sure that you're looking at the color of the candlestick because when it's green, it's typically in the oversold zone. That one doesn't have enough data. Shipping is not below the lower Kepler band. I'm looking for acquisition opportunities at this point. Now, this one, it is way above the Kepler band, so the top Kepler band, so I wouldn't be purchasing that. And I won't be purchasing this one either. It's still in the top counter bands. So you can see GRT, it just went through the, the counter. And AMP is below. So I just want to give you some ideas on how to zone in on something that's super low, but using the one week charts. Anything you want to say, Joe? It's time to go. Um. Good luck trading, everyone, and uh, let's uh, see how everything uh, evolves. Um, because I think in here coming up, once we do uh, uh, put our low in, I think that we're going to have uh, some potential uh, new opportunities for the next new upcoming cycle. So it should be a great time coming. Yeah. Good luck as trading. As long as we still get attention. I agree. And, and guys, on a positive note, just know that we – Surpass the one trillion overall market cap in crypto land, so that's a good thing. So that means more money is coming into the the entire ecosystem of crypto, which can only help things. And remember, the highest we got to was three trillion, so we have a lot of room to grow to get to past high performance levels. All right, we'll see you guys next week. Have a great day. Thank you.